Jang Gum was the first female royal physician documented in Korean history. She lived during the reign of King Jung Jung of the Joseon dynasty. Her birth year and death year are unknown. She's mentioned in the veritable records of the Joseon dynasty, the Joseon Wangjo Shilok. This in itself is unusual because she is not of royal birth. The veritable records of the Joseon dynasty were kept from 1392 to 1865 and comprise of 1,893 volumes. They are a national treasure and listed in UNESCO's Memory of the World Registry. This video will not be about the popular fictional TV series De Jang Gum, aka Jewel in the Palace, but on the historical Jang Gum, who is mentioned 10 times in the Joseon dynasty records. What transpires from these records is that King Jung Jung was pleased with Jang Gum's medical knowledge and the king trusted her in taking care of him and his family. In Korean traditional medicine, food is a major part of the treatment of an illness. This explains why Jang Gum's meals were important in Jung Jong's recovery from his various illnesses. The way she is sometimes referred to might suggest that Jang Gum became a high-ranking official as well, or at least had higher social ranking than a regular court lady physician. Jang Gum is mentioned in the records related to King Jung Jong, so it's worth spending some time to learn about the times in which Jung Jong lived. After Jung Jong's half-brother, Yeon San Gun, was deposed by a group of literati, Prince Jin Song was placed on the throne as King Jung Jong in 1506. He carried out reforms with the help of Zhou Guangzhou, who would become a very important figure in Joseon's history. Jung Jong couldn't fully rule, as the Hungu political faction who placed him on the throne held much power at court. As the leaders of the Hungu faction passed away, Jung Jong welcomed at court Sarim political faction scholars to counter the Hungu's faction's power. Zhou Guangzhou and some Sarim scholars started to carry out radical reforms. They established a self-government system called Hyangyak. They wanted to strengthen local autonomy and placed more importance in seniority instead of social status. Zhou Guangzhou wanted to distribute land to farmers equally and limit the amount of land and slaves one could own. This targeted mainly the Hungu faction's accumulation of wealth and land. Zhou Guangzhou made sure that Confucian writings were translated in Hangul so that the common people could read them. He believed that any people including slaves, could become officials. His ideas made him quite popular with the populace, but the Hungu faction leaders were threatened by his reforms. Some of the king's consorts created division between the king and Zhou Guangzhou by saying that Zhou Guangzhou had more popular support. This set the stage for the Third Literati Purge of 1519. Zhou Guangzhou was arrested and forced to drink poison. Jung Zhong was, without a doubt, led astray about Zhou Guangzhou's intentions. They both were passionate about reforms and righting the wrongs that were enabled during Yonsan Gun's reign. Many scholars at the time thought that there was no way that Zhou Guangzhou would start a coup and threaten royal authority, and thus, his death was seen at the time, as well as now, as a tragic event. Following Zhou Guangzhou's execution, 
Chung Chong's rule was met with even more chaos and violent struggles between the different factions at court, who were backed by his wives and concubines. Japanese pirates were plundering the southern coasts, and Jurchens attacked the northern part of Joseon. With all these events in mind, let's now take a look at the recorded entries on Jangum found in the records of King Jungjong. In March of 1515, the 10th year of King Jungjong's reign, a certain Unyo, a female physician, is mentioned. Unyo specialized in treating women during the Joseon dynasty. They were usually from the commoner class and were for a time, especially during Yeonsan Gun's reign, invited to royal parties and basically acted like Kisang, female entertainers. This was changed early in Junjong's reign. There was at the time social taboos against male physicians administrating treatment to women. On April 4th of 1515, some petty court officers petitioned the king to punish the female physicians that cared for the recently deceased Queen Zhang Gyeong, who died giving birth to the future King In Jong. Zhang Gyeong is mentioned in this passage. The next day, it is documented that King Jung Jong gave credit to Zhang Gyeong for saving the life of In Jong. He didn't reward her for her actions because of other state affairs. Jung Jong acknowledged that the court officers wanted him to punish her because the queen died. Jung Jong refused to punish her, but also decided to not reward her. In September of 1522, the 17th year of King Jung Jong, the queen mother, Queen Jong Hyun, was suffering from a bad cold and paralysis. She was treated by royal doctors Ha Jong He and Kim Sun Mong and the royal court ladies Shin Bi and Zhang Gum. The queen recovered fully. Jung Jong was pleased and rewarded Zhang Gum and Shin Bi with 10 sacks of rice and 10 sacks of beans. In January of 1525, the 19th year of King Jung Jong, De Zhang Gum is mentioned for the first time. De means great. This is where some Korean historians wonder if the Zhang Gum mentioned here is the same that was mentioned in earlier entries of the Chronicles. In any case, she was allowed to take care of the king. She took good care of him and was seen as more skilled than other Uinyo. In March of 1533, the 28th year of King Jung Jung, it is written that the king had been sick, suffering from festering abscess for many months and had mostly recovered from his illness. The royal physicians and of course some high-ranking officials deserved praise and reward. Amongst them was De Jang Gum, who received 15 sacks of rice and beans as well as 10 pieces of royal and ceremonial robes. In February of 1544, the 39th year of King Jung Jong, it is written that the king was already suffering from a cold, but after attending a seminar, it got worse. The seminar in question was the Gyeongyeon, in which officials discuss history and Confucian philosophy with the king. The king instructed his royal physicians, as well as De Jang Gum, to find a prescription for his illness. A couple of days later, the king recovered from his illness, and he rewarded the royal physicians and their staff. It is documented that De Jang Gum received five sacks of rice and beans, which is more than what some other officers received. This is notably the last time that De was used when talking about Zhang Gum. On November 9th of the same year of 1544, there's a record 
of a conversation between high-ranking officials and Jangum about His Majesty's health. She mentioned that the king fell asleep reading the three classics and again while reading the five classics. This is interesting because it alludes to the fact that she might have been with the king in his chambers at the time. Chung Zhong was once again sick and was constipated as well. At that time, the chief physician examined the king's pulse and medication was prescribed. A mixture of Oryong San, a medicine to help urinating, Ma Huang, Bang Gi, Hui Xiang, Bin Lang, and Wan Ji was given to the king. The next day, on November 10th, Jung Zhong commented that he was still constipated and that Zhang Gum knew all about his symptoms, meaning that she would be the one with who physicians should discuss what prescription should be offered next. A couple of days later, on November 13th, it is written that Jung Zhong recovered and that he gave time off to all medical officers who helped him. Jung Zhong mentioned Zhang Gum visited him in the morning and that he told her that he was no longer constipated and felt tremendous relief. The records also mentioned some special drink that should be drank if the king is thirsty. This was prescribed by Zhang Gum. This was the last time Zhang Gum was mentioned in the veritable records of the Joseon dynasty. Also, as we can see, almost every event of a king's life, mundane or not, was documented, even his bowel movements. Knowing all these historical entries, it is conceivable, and not too far-fetched, to think that Jung Zhong had an interest in Zhang Gum. It is unusual in the chronicles of the Joseon dynasty to find any mention of a woman physician, even less a female physician who took care of a king. It is not inconceivable that Zhang Gum and Jun Zhong might have had, to put it lightly, a thing for each other. Jung Zhong's wives and concubines were too busy backing and fighting opposite factions and court officials with different views. Jung Zhong might have found in Zhang Gum someone who wasn't playing the political game and actually listened and cared for him. After reading the historical records, I think that the fictional TV series De Zhang Gum, Jewel in the Palace in English, did a great job in using what little we know about Zhang Gum in creating a story that is believable and introduced different facets of Korean court life as well as traditional medicine and what food is served at court. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up as well as subscribe for more videos on the rich history of Korea.